Uh, good morning, friends. Uh, we have in front of us uh, Lieutenant General Satish Tambiar, who has no introduction to be given by any of us here. You know, all of us, when we look back into the modern history of Indian Army, which is not very long ago, we remember a DJMO who was very forthright with his speaking. And then we remember somebody who headed the United Nations forces for a longish period and then, you know, decided to come back to the army and uh, very voluntarily decided to, you know, call it a day. And I think one of the persons who will really give us an insight also into our topic of today, which is not only Indian army of the modern era, but the Indian army which fought the World War I, which is celebrating now its 100 years. And, uh, you know, just as the world would have it, we have two war diaries in front of us which have been gifted to the Indian Army and the representative they chose was General Satish Tambiar and uh, these war diaries are the diaries which were uh, written by the soldiers then and who were a part of the British Indian Army in the World War One. We'll have, you know, we, it, there's so much to talk and so long to talk but we give everything now and uh, it's all up and the field is open to him. I'm sure welcome General Tambiar and we'd like you to talk about uh, your stint and talk about the First World War, Indian Army's connection, and of course the nice gifts which the British High Commission has given the country. So the field is all yours. Thank you. Now I'll start by reminding you that Remembrance Day is observed on the 11th of November every year by the UK and other Commonwealth countries to mark the end of the Great War as World War I was called and to pay homage to the war dead of that time. The main event on that day is held at the Cenotaph in Whitehall, London. And I had the privilege of representing India at that event for three consecutive years from 19, 19, 1984 to 1986 as the military advisor at the High Commission of India. Now by the end of the war in 1918, over a million Indian troops had served in various overseas theatres and 74,000 had made the supreme sacrifice. It was an outstanding contribution by any standards, uh, but that it was largely unacknowledged or underacknowledged is the sad part of it, because India was then a British colony. Now in the years past, the role of the Indian troops received cursory reference in accounts put together by British historians or occasional patronizing references by the British establishment. Ironically, even after India attained independence in 1947, the contribution remained largely unacknowledged because the Indian political establishment and the civilian bureaucracy that ran the country uh, did not consider it appropriate to make much of what was thought to be a colonial legacy. However, as the centenary of the Great War approached, the Center for Armed Forces Historical Research that I had the privilege of setting up at the United Service Institution of India in December 2000, with the assistance of the Indian Army headquarters and the other two service headquarters when I was the director there, which post I held from July 1996 to December 2008. So the center took the initiative to generate interest in the contribution of the Indian Armed Forces to the Great War. While most sections of the Indian establishment were uh, generally lukewarm in their approach to this project, uh, the center I think was lucky to secure the support of uh, the uh, Ministry of External Affairs and most importantly, funding for the project, which I think led to reviving interest in and an acknowledgement of the Indian contribution through events culminating in uh, the unveiling of a memorial constructed by the government of India in France, which was unveiled by the vice president early this month. As part of this process, about a fortnight back, at a function held at the British High Commission in uh, New Delhi, I was invited to accept on behalf of the Mechanized Infantry Regiment at the hands of General V.K. Sharma, a former chief, the war diaries of a couple of our units. Now, war diaries are a daily record of events 
compiled by every unit and have particular significance in terms of battle accounts that contribute to the evaluation of the award of battle honors and more importantly or equally importantly the compi compilation of history. Insofar as the mechanized infantry regiment is concerned, it is relevant to draw attention to the fact that though the regiment came into being only in April 1979, it comprised many old and established units from other regiments. When the Indian Army took to mechanization, initially in the form of lauded infantry, then in armored personnel carriers, and finally in uh, armor infantry combat vehicles, infantry units from across various regiments of the Indian Army were selected to assume this role. The first 14 battalions of the regiment, that is 1st Mech Infantry to 14 Mech Infantry, were converted from 14 infantry battalions or from 14 infantry regiments that existed. All subsequent raisings, that is from 15th onwards, to I think they now have about up to 26 or 27, are all mixed direct intake from various classes. Now, as it happens, the first uh, few battalions that took to mechanization were 1st Madras, 1st Jat Light Infantry, 1st 8th Gurkhas, 1st Sikh, 1st Gadwal Rifles, and 1st Doglas, the oldest battalions of those six regiments, whose histories range from 250 years to 150 years. Hence, the war diaries of 2 Mech Infantry, 1st Jat Light Infantry, and 7 Mech Infantry, 1st Dogras, that are beside me, have great significance. And lastly, I would just like to bring to your notice that General K. Sundarji, Krishna Swami Sundarji, was the first colonel of the Mechanized Infantry Regiment, a charge he held from April 1979 till mid-1988. And I had the privilege of taking over the reins of the Mechanized Infantry Regiment from him uh, till I retired in on the 31st of August 1994 and that was the capacity in which I was probably invited to accept these two war diaries. Thank you.